Welcome back friends. Previously we have talked about the motility of food in through the esophagus. Now we'll be talking about the motility in the stomach region, which is a very important part also. Okay. Now uh, we have already talked about this part, so you can look at the video first, then come back to see this one. Now what you've studied that the bolus is moving through the esophagus through through two different constriction. One is the upper esophageal sphincter, then the lower esophageal sphincter. Now as the bolus is moving through the peristalsis pathway, muscle contraction and relaxation, it finally reaches this lower esophageal sphincter, which is the junction of esophagus and stomach. Now it passes through this esophageal junction and it moves towards the stomach. Now when it is coming towards the stomach, now the stomach of human body need to have uh, or need to maintain three major functions. One is holding the food, second one is mixing the food and third one is forwarding the food. So these are three important stages, right? So holding the food particle, mixing the food particle and delivering the food particle into the next section of digestive system because stomach is the first region where the food can be stored for a little bit amount of time because most of uh, some of the uh, digestive system enzymes kind of mixed at this particular place it's kind of acidic environment so acid is required and the mixing of proper mixing of food is required because you can see in this esophageal region there is no way of mixing because if you need to mix something you need a large region to mix it if you are having small tunnel, you can't mix something very well. So here stomach, it's a large area, large surface area, so you can mix it quickly. So let's look at here what we can see in case of stomach. So in case of stomach, uh, so what we talk, we, we, we know that here we are having, uh, here we are having uh, holding the food, mixing the food, and third one is forwarding the food. Okay, so for holding the food, the structure of stomach is very well designed because it's a large structure, it's a sac like structure, so it can hold the food for a longer period of time. Now, as we are eating the food constantly, the stomach size is kind of increasing with time. Okay, and it depends that in esophageal system also, when the food is moving or the bolus is moving, the contraction and relaxation of the muscles, or which is called the peristalsis of the muscles, it depends on the amount of bolus that is moving because this is a muscle muscular pressure that is applied to the bolus right now it depends upon the size of the bolus right if you if you take much more food at once it will require more energy and more pressure to push it down and if you take small amount of food it will take less pressure so that is how it is calculated similar here in case of stomach so if you eat more food the stomach will create more pressure and it will more vigorously mix those food because they, it need to work be very hard at that time to mix them because there are a lot of food and also forwarding means emptying also this means empty so emptying right so emptying of the food can also be regulated by the amount of food so if you take more food emptying will be made very fast also okay so because it, it, they need to do this fast so let's say the so holding can be achieved by the structure of the stomach itself so we don't need to bother about holding much in this case and as the food is coming stomach is kind of expanding so if i draw the major parts it will look something like It looks something like that. The stomach will look something like that. Now, in this case, this is the remember what is this? This is the lower esophageal sphincter or LES. Now, through this, when the bolus is migrated, now why we require this lower esophageal sphincter and upper esophageal sphincter? Because we don't need uh, the those materials which are being mixed in the stomach to come back to the esophagus. Why? Because there are acids secreted from the stomach and the environment is acidic if the food particle from stomach is kind of it fluxes and it fluxes out to the esophageal region it will take some acid with it and esophageal walls are not designed in such a way so that they can tolerate acid but the stomach cells are made such a way so that they can tolerate acid they are made in such a way 
they are coated in such a way but esophageal cells are not specialized in handling acids so if acids migrates towards the esophageal wall it can damage esophagus that's why we need to have this kind of sphincters at both this terminal of the esophageal junction with the stomach so here we have so in this case food migrates here now the first thing is achieved that holding of the food is very simple now second one is the mixing of the food now for mixing of the food and also for for emptying of the food both of them they require a same important function and that is peristalsis again so peristalsis again is helping the food to mix properly and also to relax properly except for the peristalsis for holding the food we call it as a relaxation process or food relaxation because throughout the esophagus food is kind of moving it's very busy now it's getting relaxed because it is getting some time to stay somewhere right so there are two type of chewing pro motility processes in stomach one is relaxation of the food another one is the peristalsis of the food so i must write relaxation here relaxation in stomach there is relaxation as well as peristalsis okay so this relaxation is done very basic so it's expanding it's done after that the mixing now for the mixing i have told you that they require peristalsis to mix the food now again peristalsis means construction co contraction and relaxation of the muscles now the muscles placed here in the stomach lining they kind of contracts and relaxes with time very slowly now it depends upon the amount of food that is present if it is encountering more food it need to make this peristalsis pretty fast because it need to empty such thing pretty fast right so in this case the peristalsis in stomach kind of begins at the middle region of the stomach so peristalsis begins kind of from here it is going towards the duodenum ending and then again it is reversing back towards so what is going on that it is pushing things down and then coming things up so that this is so look at the arrow that i have drawn so it's kind of pushing foods downwards and some part of the food is kind of moved very few part part of the food but th there is a sphincter here also there is this region is also constricted is there is another sphincter so for for this region very few amount of food can migrate here during this this construction so most of the food kind of mixed again and shift back towards the towards the stomach itself so this kind of food is kind of hitting the wall of duodenum and it is coming back hitting the wall duodenum coming back hitting the wall coming back so it's kind of mixing of the food is occurring this way once mixing the food for several time in such a way so that means bolus encounter is there so first bolus is there we had bolus here but now the bolus is added with hcl with some gastric so actually i must write gastric juice not actually hcl because hcl is a part of gastric juice so everything is mixed now the mixed particle of our bolus with gastric juice here is termed as chyme it is termed as chyme right so now the food particle will be termed as chyme so the chyme is kind of hitting the wall and coming back hitting the wall and coming back it's mixed completely once after mi mixing is done and uh, it depends on time it, it is also this this process is not voluntary we know this process is a reflex process it's controlled by nervous system so system controls this once after a certain time when they when they thought that yes mixing is kind of proper in that case it needs to force some amount of food into this duodenum region now during this process of movement of the food into the duodenum region it signals it signals uh, it, it, get, it is getting the signal from the uh, nervous system now in this process when they thought that yes it, we need to move the food faster in that case it needs to increase the peristalsis much more in higher order so it will increase the peristalsis because the pressure that they are creating is now high and now now the food is kind of hitting this hitting the valve at the present at the junction of duodenum with uh, the stomach but it is not coming back it is going towards the duodenum so it's now invading it it is going towards the duodenum and food is kind of moved towards the duodenum here so food is kind of forced towards the duodenum but again not all the food are forced at at the same time to the duodenum little amount of food little by little they are added to the duodenum and then they are coming now another important factor plays 
a very important role during this process of movement of food particle or chyme from stomach to duodenum and that is the emptiness of our duodenum or emptiness of our small intestine because most of the digestive works are going on in the small intestine all the enzymes for protein degradation lipid degradations are kind of coming in this small intestine right so what is going on here in the small intestine if it is a protein degrading pathway so it's not that difficult protein is degraded pretty easily but if it is fat then there is to degrade fat it takes most of the time by the small intestine because degradation of the fat is not easy we need to make the fat form solubilized then we need to break it into smaller pieces then digest it slowly and slowly so if there is more fat present in this small intestinal region it will take larger time for our small intestine to package the fat or to degrade the fat uh, form of digestion for that reason if it they are not emptying fat materials from this small intestinal portion it, they won't they don't try to receive any food from stomach so they there is a signaling between the small intestine and stomach that if there is emptiness in the intestine then only they will tell the stomach yes i am empty throw me some food and i i will digest it but if they are having already processing of food is going on already then they will not tell the stomach uh, to send food so what will happen if you take large amount of fat meals and then you take a meal after say one or two hour just after the fat meal now what is going on the digestion of his fat is not completed so intestine probably don't <coughs> want food and stomach is kind of filled with food so you feel an uneasiness because the food that you have eaten is stayed uh, it is staying in your stomach for one two hours it's not very good sign it is not moving right because this coordination is going on that is the thing and then when uh, it is getting emptied because when the fat digestion is completed uh, biles biles are removed salts are removed because those are required for the uh, digestion of fat everything is removed now after digestion of the fat is completed they need to neutralize this <coughs> intestinal region because they are kind of uh, different uh, acid and all these different things are kind of mixed so after the neutralization is done then only they will receive food from the stomach now they receive food from the stomach and the food is now migrated towards the duodenum and then they will move <coughs> to the place and the junction of stomach and duodenum is called pylorus because this pylorus is again the control point remember i have talked about the valves on very constriction not actually valves but muscular constriction it is called pylorus now when uh, the duodenum is ready when the small intestine is ready then only they are telling this yes fetch me some food and then the pylorus is ready through the pylorus and, and and the constriction or the peristalsis is keeping on forward and the food is migrated through the pylorus into the duodenum and that is the stage of and the motility that is done in the stomach so that's kind of it and i hope that's helpful thank you